Hey guys, it's Zachary from Hardware Zone and today we're going to be talking about the DJI Mini 2 drone. Welcome back to the lab and I'm actually very excited about this video because the Mini 2 is my very first drone. <laughs> it's not that I've never seen a drone before, it's just that I've never flown one myself um, and Hardware Zone doesn't really review drones on a regular basis because of all the regulations surrounding owning a drone or licensing that you might be required to fly a drone in Singapore. And that's kind of where the original Mavic Mini came in because DJI basically designed the drone to be just shy of the weight limit that you needed to register it. It's under 250 grams so anybody can just walk into a store, pick it off a shelf and fly it. Now we didn't really review the original Mavic Mini as well um, although we did do like a quick uh, first looks kind of feature video on it just to show its various you know flight and shooting modes but the Mini 2 I've actually spent a considerable amount of time with. Now if you're like me and you've always seen drone footage and you've always been interested in it in owning one but you don't really know what's actually required to own a drone or fly a drone then I think you should keep watching this video. Let's just quickly go through specs. I'm going to throw up the Mavic Mini here on my right and Mini 2 on my left. And now this is a very straightforward comparison. The Mini 2 basically is a straight up upgrade. It can now shoot video at up to 4K 30 frames per second, much higher bit rate as opposed to just 2.7K on the Mavic Mini. Uh, photography is still at 12 megapixels except the Mini 2 can now shoot JPEG plus RAW as opposed to just JPEG. The biggest improvement as far as I'm concerned is OcuSync 2.0. Um, this is a wireless technology that's DJI's proprietary connectivity between the drone and its controller. Now on the Mavic Mini, it used basic Wi-Fi. So it was rated at about four kilometers distance. Connectivity wise with OcuSync 2.0, you can now go up to 10 kilometers. And that's an extra peace of mind sort of to have you that you don't have your drone flying somewhere off and then dropping off the grid because it loses connection and you can't find it anymore and can't come back. And yeah, so OcuSync 2.0, I think that alone is worth the upgrade from the Mini 2. Um, besides that, it's actually got more powerful motors as well. So the Mini 2 can fly faster than the Mavic Mini and it can also withstand stronger winds than the Mavic Mini, which is a great thing to have because for such a lightweight drone under 250 grams, being able to be more stable in the air, fly faster, you know, withstand winds, great addition great improvement and I think this is really one of those products that is worth its upgrade because there are a lot of tech products that you know you sort of think should I upgrade if I have the predecessor and or should I wait for another generation this is a very big improvement over the Mini. The Mini 2 comes in a standard package for 599 Singapore dollars and for that you get the drone and the controller and it's basically it. So of, of course you get one set of everything, you get one set of propellers, you get one battery, but you get my point, you, you just get this and just to get you running and that's it, you don't even get a case for this. Now this box that I have had here since the start of this video is the Fly More Combo and this is what DJI sent me. This goes for $799, so for $200 extra, what you get is a case and a whole bunch of accessories and spare parts for the drone, right? So let's put the box away and I'll show you what you get. So you get this nice case which puts everything in properly. You get uh, three sets of extra propellers. So in total, you have four propellers, four sets of propellers. You get one set of extra joystick nubs for the controller. Now the controller with the Mavic 2 comes with removable joysticks where you can you know, screw in when you want to use it. Screw them back out, put it at the bottom you know, so you can pack it, everything flat, it's nice. So if you lose this for whatever reason, extra joystick nubs. You also get extra batteries, you get two extra batteries, 
with this so three batteries in total and this uh, battery charging hub now you they have an led indicator for each of the battery what i noticed though is that when you charge this it charges each battery one at a time not all together so you'll finish charging one battery then it moves on to charge the other battery then it moves on to charge the other battery you get the point um, what's interesting also is that this has an output as well as an input so in a pinch you can kind of use this to charge your phone or any other device via usb um, as long as of course the batteries in it are charged right so that's what you get as extra and of course all the other standard components like the USB-C cable everything charges via USB-C now uh, charger screwdriver for the propellers and extra set of phone connectors for that. what I have here is the USB-C and the micro USB-C right so is this worth 799 is this worth that $200 extra um, I guess it's really up to what you use the drone for like to be honest this whole time that I've been using the mini 2 I've never used any of these extras even the battery now that's because I don't fly the drone continuously to a point where I deplete the battery and after that I still need to shoot something right if you're a heavy user then definitely these replacement parts and the extra batteries come at uh, you know it's very useful to have this is different from um, the pocket 2 creator combo which i felt was a necessary like a must-have because it had uh, items in there that made the product so much better that improved its performance that gave it more capabilities but you know what you really get here are just replacement parts now getting the drone up and running was actually surprisingly simple so you have this uh, propeller guard which you can clip off that keeps the propellers in place so they don't like swing around and you've also got this plastic cap here which is actually uh, the gimbal and camera guard so you need to remove that as well before you fly and then you can unfurl the drone now there are the upper and lower propellers and what you want to do is you actually want to open the upper propeller first because if you open the bottom one then you're actually blocking uh, the upper one from opening so you open the top propellers first then the bottom and you've got yourself a drone now for the mini 2 uh, there is a usb slot at the back the USB-C port at the back this it can be used to charge the drone as well as transfer data uh, if you connect directly to a PC you've got a SD card slot over here and there's a flap for the battery now I already have one battery in there of course but yeah that's where the battery goes and that's basically it for the drone so at the bottom what you see is that there's a button here that's the start button if you press it one it tells you led indicator for the amount of battery that's left in the drone and these two at the bottom here are what do you call uh, floor sensors right it basically detects uh, the ground so you can take off and land uh, the drone successfully now this drone doesn't have any other sensors to it so there are there are no like collision detection or sight kind of sensors and that's one of the main pain points i have with the mini 2 because as a beginner level drone i would have thought that that is one of the most important things to have and to start up the drone basically you tap the power button and then you tap it again and hold so this is sort of like a protection so that you don't accidentally start up the drone tap and tap it again after starting the drone you can lay it on a flat surface a ground anywhere you want to take off from make sure that there's nothing nearby and then we move on to the controller now as i told you before the controller has removable nubs so you get it out screw them in and then you need your phone so open up phone cradle there would be a cable here 
for your phone i'm using an iphone so i'm using the lightning cable if you use an android there are additional cables that you can swap out for usb-c and uh, micro usb so slot in your phone into the cradle pop in and then start the dji fly app now to start the controller it's the same process as the drone you press the power button once it shows you the battery level on the controller so to start it you tap it once and then you tap and hold again and it starts the controller again this is a protective measure so you know you don't accidentally tap it while you're flying and turn off the controller right and once that's done basically um, once your drone is paired and your controller is paired with the app you're basically ready to fly so the thing on this controller is what you have is the twin joystick nubs you have a power button of course and this button here is a recall button so as you're flying if you're flying far away and you can't really see your drone anymore instead of manually trying to recall it you can just press this button and it would uh, fly back to its home position or where it first started from in the middle there is a switch for cinematic normal and sport in cinematic mode it kind of flies slower and smoother or it tries to make it smoother so if you're doing a panning shot and all that it's it's less jerky in sport mode when you move you tend to find your footage might might be you know that kind of jerky because it, it tends to um, try to fly faster with that and on the back you have uh, basically the two triggers is to start snapping photos or videos start and stop and to control uh, the gimbal once you have everything set up it's actually very easy to get started get going and you know i can just press the take off button oh you have to hold it as well and it takes off right so you can just control it like any other like a remote control car basically i can fly it around the room with relative ease yeah johnny 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 Ooh. there we go that's the drone oh, it's coming closer Woo. all right so yes i've established that it's actually pretty easy to fly the drone and you can land it by pressing the land button ensure that the landing area is safe and it will land right because it has sensors at the bottom so yeah flying the drone is simple so as you can see flying the drone is actually very simple i could do it in this enclosed room with relative ease and i could you know maneuver it properly outdoors it's even better with ocusync 2.0 and you know it's very strong signal to the remote control and uh, gps connectivity is pretty fast uh, there, there's an indicator on the top here which will show you of course we're indoors now you can't see it but it's an indicator on top which shows how many gps uh, satellites you're connected to the more satellites you're connected to the stronger the connection uh, the more accurate um, flight is if you wanted to shoot some of its you know, cool quick shot modes which are pre-programmed flight paths where, where it shoots uh in, in a specific way where like boomerang where it flies there and back or or it's helix you know the the mavic mini had some of these modes the mini 2 has extra modes it can also shoot panorama and all these are basically one button uh shots as long as the drone is up in the air i can't click it now again because it's on uh, the table but once it's up in the air you just have to press a button and it does its thing but so that's not my problem my problem is that without collision detection it's one of my biggest fears when using these um, auto pre-programmed modes like using quick shot for example there have been a few times where i thought it would collide with something that i don't know if it really would because from where i'm standing the drone is too far away and even i'm out in the beach and it's it's already quite an empty space you know 
it was going in this flight path where it kind of looked like it would clip something and, and I had to quickly stop it. So it, it's it's one of those fears that, that are that's always there with me when I fly this because I know there's no collision detection and even um, the return to home mode, right? Because when this you click this button, wherever it's at, it will return to home in a straight line. And if you basically, you must be sure that whatever is in that straight line where it returns, it's not going to knock into something because if there is something in a way, it will just crash. Basically, the other problem I notice um, flying the Mini 2 in Singapore is that Singapore is such a densely populated area that some places seem to interfere with its compass, right? It has a magnet in there which, which runs a compass that you need to calibrate from time to time, especially um, if you're in a new area, you can choose to manually calibrate it or sometimes when you start it up, the pre-flight checks will tell you that the compass is out of whack and you know it asks you to recalibrate it. I've been to places where it keeps asking me to calibrate the compass so I'm not sure if you know uh, some things are there that, that messes with the compass. I think one of those areas is uh, Marina Bay Sands. Uh, yeah so got quite a scare there flying at night and it sort of stopped halfway out in the water and I couldn't get like it, 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 it couldn't get a compass reading it turned red and and then it started again so that was scary but yeah that happened um, the other thing also is that basically Singapore as a small country is the whole country is covered in restricted zones or no-fly zones and, and those kind of things like like you know the the DJI fly app has a map which actually shows you as an updated uh, database of where you can cannot fly and you know all kinds of restricted zones authorization zones altitude zones and i understand that if you're a professional and you work with drones and you have a license to use the drones or you have authorization to fly a drone or shoot a drone in certain areas that it would probably be okay for you but for a regular person like me you know, every time I try to fly somewhere, I get any kind of, you know, a caution or error or warning prompt that, you know, that pops up, you know, I, I panic. I start to like, oh, you know, what's this? Is this, is this just a warning or, you know, am I breaking the law here? And there's a lot of questions that keep popping up. And, and basically, the, the whole country is covered in this, right? So that could be a problem. That's something you really need to think about um, what you're using the drone for and what you're trying to shoot, what, where you're trying to fly because you know or else you you keep getting you know these errors you can either choose to ignore them i guess um, but you could be breaking the law i really do think that the dji mini 2 is a very impressive beginner drone you know, i kind of expected uh, a higher learning curve to this but setting it up and getting it to go was really a no-brainer right and getting cool shots with it is simple too i mean almost anything that you shoot from the sky in any kind of aerial shot automatically is like 10 times cooler than anything you can shoot from ground level if it had collision detection i would be over the moon hey guys before you go, don't forget to check out hardwarezone.com, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, join in the conversation, like and subscribe to our YouTube if you want to see more of these videos. Do it.